Vamos aquí con Tim Koniskis, eh, director de Dodge para Estados Unidos. Well, uh, Tim, uh, thank you very much for having us here at the, another launch for Dodge. Um, and it's not just another launch. Like uh, with every new car that you are bringing into the market, it's, something is happening in the company. Well, the Charger launch today is a pretty exciting day. I mean, who else is launching a full-size four-door family-capable sedan? And I, I say that carefully, family-capable, <laughs> because exactly. it's not just family-capable. It's a muscle car. It's a race car. It's a family-capable sedan. And bring all the journalists out to a racetrack. That tells you how confident we are about this car and how different this car is. And you talked about this being another launch for Dodge. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring everything out that's different, unique, and something that the customers have to take a look at. Yeah. So you're celebrating 100 years, and uh, these new... Um, revert, uh, let's say, for Dodge. Start with the Dart, like only, what, three, four years ago, something like that? Dart's only been off for a couple of years now, and what we're saying is that we want all of our cars to be similar to the Charger, being the Charger of this segment that they play in. And, and when I say that, I don't mean I want them to be Chargers. I yeah. want them to be the idea of a Charger, where the Charger is completely different within the segment that it competes in. Dart's actually very similar. If you look at the Dart, it's completely different than most of the other compact cars in the segment. It's a little bit bigger, it's a little bit sportier, it looks different, it has a different stance, and the people that buy it really appreciate the differences of that car because it's not like a lot of the other cars in the segment. It, for that segment, it yeah. really is the charger of that segment. Yeah, and it's not only the performance and the design, but like the, all the, the new things that are coming in since the merged with, uh, with Fiat, it's like completely different cars from just one generation ago. Yeah, it's not all about being the Hellcat. I mean, the Hellcat's the thing that, we're, that everybody's excited about, everybody's talking about, but you got to remember, in a car like the Charger that we're driving today, 60-plus percent of the cars are going to be a V6. Now, that's different than it was maybe 10 years ago. A V6 today is a high-performance car. Exactly. The V6 that we have in this car is 292 horsepower and an optional 300 horsepower V6, which a couple of years ago, that was actually a high-performance V8. So you can get 31 miles per gallon, 300 horsepower, and have a $28,000 family-capable sedan. Yeah. But with these cars, some other manufacturers are bringing smaller engines, like foreign cylinder engines with turbochargers to this segment. So that's not the plan for Dodge, right? Well, not, not right now. We don't need to. I mean, if you can have a full-size car and have 300 horsepower with an eight-speed transmission and get 31 miles per gallon, you got a pretty good balance of performance and fuel economy there today. Yeah. Um, so you launched the Challenger just a few months ago. And even though these, they share like the Hellcat at the higher end of the segment of the line, they're completely different cars, huh? They're completely different cars. And, you know, a lot of people will look at the two cars and say one's a two-door, one's a four-door. And that's great. We tried to make the lineup of the cars very, very similar from an SXT V6 model up to an RT, up to a Scat Pack. We now have a Scat Pack on both, on the Char Charger and the Challenger, and then the Hellcat. But it's a completely different buyer. You know, people that are shopping for uh, Charger are coming from different segments. People that are looking at a Challenger, it's a very pure car. It's yeah. an honest muscle car. It's not trying to be anything other than exactly what it is, whereas the Charger is completely flexible based on how the consumer specs out that car. It can go anywhere from you know, a very family-oriented sedan all the way up to a 700 horsepower super sedan. And that's the other great thing about this car. I mean, the price range is it's very, very big. I mean, so that people can pick from anything. It starts, what, like around 27? You start at $27,995, so you start at $28,000 for the 300-horsepower car. And then we go up to the RT, which is only another $4,000, so $32,000 for the first V8. Then we step up to the Scat Pack, our 485 horsepower, and we wanted to keep that very accessible, so we priced that at $39,995, so under $40,000. You have a 485 horsepower full-size sedan, and then our Hellcat is also, I believe, very reasonable as well at $63,995. Well, that's... Uh, as as we're hearing going by, which is pretty, sounds pretty cool. That was another big thing when the Challenger came out. I mean, that, the surprise of the pricing. I mean, like, are you making any money with these cars? <laughs> Uh, you know, I, actually, a lot of people were surprised at the price. But you got to remember, um, 
what we're trying to do is create a showroom walk with these cars so that we start out the car at 27995 on the Challenger and then we got to be able to walk you up to a V8 model and then we got to walk you up to a Scat Pack model then up to an SRT and then to a Hellcat and I don't want to ever get into the position where the gap from one car to the other one is so excessive it's viewed as just grabbing pricing from a customer. I want them to be accessible and whichever model you want to step up to I'm going to show you a value in the content that you're getting as you step up to that next car perfect example is the car we're driving today. When you go from an SE to an SXT up to an RT, there's a $4,000 walk, but you get a lot of content, actually more than $4,000 worth of content to justify that walk. And I want to be able to look the customer in the eye and say, it's $4,000 more, but here's what you're getting for that. Yeah. And in, in that sense, uh, the customers are expecting more and more for, for less price. And I guess technology has allowed you manufacturers to do that. But the, the expectation is getting much higher at, at every level, right? Even uh, at the level, at the entry the, level. The technology is really what's enabling us to do things like this. I mean, if you think about it, you got a, uh, talk about the Challenger for a second, you got a car that gets 22 miles per gallon with 700 horsepower. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, actually, up until we announced that, it was probably <laughs> viewed as being impossible. Um, so the technology allows that to happen, which allows that price point to be reasonable for a customer because you know not that long ago if you needed to build a 700 horsepower car that was going to be a full-on race car which was going to make it very low volume and very very expensive and probably but, not street legal <laughs> absolutely not but now that the technology enables you to bring that technology down it allows you to sell it at a very reasonable price point that's amazing well so uh, 100 years for dutch uh, it's been amazing up and down like any other big company but like now you're like on the fast track it seems like it, you know it, the 100th anniversary celebration this year has been absolutely fantastic. The fact that it's timed perfectly with the launch of the Charger and the Challenger, which are actually the core of our DNA as a brand, it's, it's working out very well. And we showed some commercials this morning at the launch event celebrating the 100th anniversary and specifically tying into the Dodge Brothers because I think it's important that we tell the story of these two guys. And it's not so much that we're 100 years old because I don't, I don't know that people really care that much about it. Yeah, I, I was going to say that. like Most people don't really know the history of Dodge. Right. And it's very rich. It is very rich. I, I, have a, I believe that not that many people really care that you're 100 years old. But I think they're interested in the story to know Dodge is not five letters. It yeah. actually stands for two brothers that started the company, and they were really cool guys, by the way. So they fit perfectly with the positioning of the brand today. That, to me, is a very interesting story. Yeah, the commercials are fantastic because they really tell the whole story, what, 30, 40 seconds? And it really goes to the point. So congratulations on that, and thank you very much. We're going to go out and drive the cars and see how we do. I know the car is going to do well. I don't know about the driver. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.